Hey guys, welcome back. It's day two of the Baritone Beginner Series. In today's lesson, we're gonna take a look at two new chords, two new strumming patterns, and spend most of our time playing together on this beautiful Kala Baritone Acoustic Electric Uke. So get tuned up and let's get to it. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of new chords. So we're gonna focus on minor chords today and we're gonna to continue to work through the key of G because the baritone is set up perfectly to play in the key of G with all of these one and two finger chords. Just like in standard tuning for uke, everything is set up for C. This is all set up for G. So we're gonna stick with the key of G this time and we're gonna add the B minor chord first here. So on the little E string on the second fret, we're gonna play with our index finger. And then on the B string on the third fret, we'll use our middle finger and our ring finger here on the G string on the fourth fret. And that chord will sound like this when you strum all four strings. So you really wanna focus on making sure that you're on your fingertips and also using your thumb to intersect the back of that chord. So you want your thumb on the middle of the back of the neck to create that pinch to help you get your fingers squeezing down on the string. So you want all of those notes to ring nice and clear. So take a second here with me and just pluck with your thumb through each of the strings. Make sure all of them are ringing out nice and clearly. You wanna leave a little sliver of space between your finger and the frets to get that nice, clean, clear tone. And that's what you're trying to achieve with these chords. So, first chord, B minor. The second chord that I wanna show you is the A minor chord. So the A minor chord, we'll start with our middle finger here on the D string on the second fret. And then we'll place our ring finger on the G string on the second fret. So you kinda of have to kind of tilt your hand a little bit to get both of those fingers in here, but the good thing about the baritone is you have a little bit better fret spacing to work with here. So if you're in the market for a new instrument, the baritone might be for you if you have trouble squeezing your fingers in on the smaller ukes. And then last but not least here, we have the index finger on the B string on the first fret. So again, thumb behind that chord, really make sure you're on your fingertips. You should see your fingernails looking right up at you as you're playing these chords here. So I'll strum that for you. This is an A minor chord. So we're dealing with some pretty uh, melancholy chords here today, but they sound really nice on the baritone. So we're gonna go through some progressions in a little bit here once we do some strumming pattern work, which I'll get to right now. Alrighty, so let's talk about a couple of new strumming patterns for you. Before I get to that, I want to reiterate to you the importance of your playing position. So again, they go hand in hand. You want to make sure that you have the neck tilted up here about 45 degrees, the instrument secured up against your torso, and then with your strumming hand, try to keep that right across here. That's going to put you in the best position for strumming, and that is super important as we get going here. So. The first pattern I want to show you is down, down, up. Now this pattern could be applied to anything kind of in the country, folk, Americana genre, and it's got a nice kind of galloping feel to it. So I'm just going to hold down that first chord I showed you, which is a B minor, and we're going to just do down, down, up pattern here. So in order to do that, starting with my index finger in the hook shape here, and we're going to strum down, and then down, up. And the way we would count that is one, two, and. So this is a strumming pattern in two, four times. So it would be played one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and. Something to note about this, to kind of get that gallopy feel to it, I'm really just kind of popping the top couple strings with that first down strum. So if you listen to me do this fast, it kind of really sounds like we're really kind of getting this bouncing feel to it. So the way that I'm doing that is with a short first strum. So if you hear that kind of galloping feel, that's created by that short first strum. So let's try that strum together now. We'll just go nice and slow and we're gonna go back and we're gonna hold a G chord just to make this very simple. So I just want you to take 
here and this is going to be part of a little trick I'm going to show you here in the play alongs. I want you to hold your G chord with your middle finger here on the little E string on the third fret. So as you do that, I'm just going to count us in. We'll go nice and slow. Let's do this strumming pattern together about eight times, just so you can really feel the timing. If you want to count along with me, I think that'll be helpful for you, helpful for you to really feel this pattern out. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and 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 one. One more. One, two, and one, two, So that's a very useful pattern that we're going to kind of dive into a little bit more here in the play alongs. But before we get to that, I want to show you the second pattern that is called the island strum. So this pattern, we're going to just basically double what we just did. So this pattern is down, down, up, up, down, up. And the way that we count that is one, two, and, and, four, and. So again, one, two, and, and, four, and. Something I want to make note of for you here is, as you're strumming, you always want to do what they call subdividing, which means that you want your hand to always be traveling down and up. Regardless if you're hitting the strings or not, the pattern is going to be set up with one and two and three and four and where all of the numerals are your down strums and the ands are your up strums. The way that strumming patterns are created is by omitting those hits out of the strumming pattern. So when you're doing down, down, up, up, down, up, you're essentially doing one and two and three and four and, but you're just omitting some of those strum hits out. So that's how it's kind of counted. And I'll continue to kind of explain this throughout the series to help it make more sense for you. But let's try again. We're just going to stay on one chord here. We're going to strum the G chord, holding down our middle finger. And just try to stay with me. I'm going to go really, really slow here at first, just so you can really feel out the strumming pattern. Again, try to count with me if you want to. Watch your strumming hand as you're doing this to really work on your technique. You want to stay nice and concise here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. So if you need to pause, spend a little time going at that really slow tempo, I think that'll help you keep your eyes on your hand here. While you're learning this pattern, it's also a good idea to say the strum. Say down, down, up, up, down, up. And really feel that strumming pattern. Try to internalize it so that you don't have to think about it when you start moving your eyes over here to play the chords. So let's do that pattern again, just holding a G chord. I'm just going to bump the tempo up slightly just so you get another repetition here and really feel out the strumming pattern. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Keep counting if you need to. One, two, and, and four, and. Nice and concise with your strum. Smiling. Enjoying the sweet sounds of the baritone. One, two, and, and four, and one more. So between those two strumming patterns and what we learned in day one, you can tackle a ton of different songs. So now we're going to take a look at a couple of short play-alongs to incorporate these new chords we've learned with these new strumming patterns. So retune your uke and let's get to it. All right, let's put this together now. So we're gonna use the first strumming pattern down, down, up to go through a simple chord progression. So the chord progression will be G, 
B minor, and then from last week we're going to use our E minor chord. So if you need a refresher on that, you can check out the baritone chord chart that we just posted at allforuke.com. And then we're also going to revisit the C chord, which is right here. So if you want to follow along on the diagrams below, that will help you out. We're going to do each one of these chords four times. Now before we do that, this is the little trick that I was talking about. To play your G chord here, when you're going to transition to the B minor chord. Now this is only when you transition to B minor, so if you come across a song where there is this transition involved, I would highlight it and only use this trick at that point. But what you'll do is you'll play G with your middle finger, and you're going to place your index finger here on the second fret. Now that doesn't make any sound, but what it does is it creates a pivot point for us to move up here to our B minor chord. So if you watch how much easier this transition is than moving from my ring finger over, this is just a little trick that saves you time, and saving time makes all the difference when you're strumming, especially as you gain speed. So let's go through this four times per chord. We'll go nice and slow, and then we'll bump up the tempo a little bit. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One. So now let's take that exact same sequence and we're just going to bump up the tempo a little bit. Don't feel obligated to speed up at this point. If you need to spend a little more time right there with the slow progression, there's nothing wrong with that. Those slow repetitions, I always say, are worth double repetitions because you really have to focus to go slow. And I promise you, if you spend time going slow as you're developing, it's really going to pay off in the long run. So let's try that again, a little bit more tempo. And stay relaxed, smile, if you're playing you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and two, two, three, four. Two, three, four. E minor. Two, three, four. To the C. Alright, let's take a look at our second sweet little chord progression here. So we're going to start off with an A minor chord. So that'll sound like this. Now as we move to our second chord, which is D7, we're going to pivot off of our index finger to move down here. So watch that move again slowly here. I'm using my index to move down to the D7. In root 2, my G chord, which again, I'm going to find my path there by taking my ring finger and sliding from the second to the third fret. And then as I move back for my fourth chord and final chord C, I have my fingers hovering in position here, kind of over the strings where they're headed to get to my C chord. So that's something I want you to keep in your memory bank. Keep your fingers close to the frets. Always try to find those little shortcuts from getting chord to chord. Be close to the strings. That's just going to help you as you develop your playing. So let's take a look here. We're going to use the down, down, up, up, down, up pattern, the island strum 
for this sequence. So we'll do it nice and slow, and then we'll build a little tempo the second time around. We'll do each one of these chords two times. Follow along, do this as many times as you need to, and really try to build these chord changes because all of these chord changes in the key of G continue to reappear. So the more acclimated you get from moving chord to chord, the better off you'll be. So here we go, starting on the A minor. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and D7. One, two, and, and four, and G. And four, and G. Back to C. Let's do that again. We're gonna go back to the A minor. So just add your ring finger down. and consistent to the G chord. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and last one on the C. All right, now let's bump the tempo up a couple ticks here. Feel more like a song tempo. So here we go. I'll count us in. Same format, same chord moves. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, D7. One more time. It's our last rep of the day. Have some fun with this one. One, two, and a four, and one, two, and D7. Slide to the G. To the C. And then end on a G chord. Thanks so much for joining me for day two of the Baritone Beginner Series. I'm so excited to share this beautiful acoustic electric Kala Baritone ukulele equipped with a nice pickup, ebony back and sides, mahogany with a cedar top here. Just a beautiful instrument. I lied, it's a spruce top. Awesome instrument. And if you click the link in the description, I'm gonna be listing some of these on my website. So if you're interested in playing baritone, this is the place to be. If you guys like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also, comment below. Let me know, are you playing baritone? Are you interested in baritone? Do you know anybody who plays baritone? I'm here to answer your questions and help you navigate the whole world of baritone, which is slightly new to me as well, but I have to say, honestly, I'm loving playing this instrument from a uh, musical perspective and just having something cool to add to the Ute collection. I really, really enjoy it. If you want a lesson sheet to work off of for this exercise that we did today, go to allforuke.com. You can print that out and kind of keep working through a lot of these different chord progressions. And I've added some extra chord progressions that we didn't cover in the video. So you can play around with those two and kind of really build all of these mechanics as you learn the baritone. My name's Kevin. Thanks so much for watching today. I will see you next time for day three of the Baritone Beginner Series. Take care. On this sunny day.